So I was driving home from work and uh, it's right at sunset. So I turned the lights on and uh, my turn signals didn't come on like they usually do. I'm sure you've seen in past videos where the uh, the turn signal arrows, they, uh, they stay lit up. Of course the damn turn signals aren't working now. It's a different problem, I'll get to that. But anyway, the turn signal arrows light up when the headlights are on. And uh, at the time, it was too bright for me to see the backlights and the gauges. So I thought, like, my headlights weren't working because the arrows didn't turn on. Now, the reason the arrows turn on is because it's, it's a turn signal bulb being burnt out. That's how it tells you that one of your turn signals is out. Um, and for me, the front ones have been out ever since I've had the thing. Uh, and I've never done anything about it because I kind of like the arrows. But I get out to check what's going on, and suddenly... These suckers are on. I've never seen them on before. They've, they, it's the entire time I've had this thing, the turn signals in the front, the running lights, have never worked. And suddenly, just randomly, out of nowhere, both of them start working at the exact same time. It must be the 21 slot grill. But anyway, I just mounted the new tires. It's new to the truck. These are the tires that came off of my XJ. Uh, they were, you know, obviously they're used, but they were in a lot better shape than the old tires. I'll show you a picture on screen of the old ones. The, these are from 2003. So that makes them 19 years old as of recording this right now. I was driving around on 19 year old tires and they still held together. They're Bridgestones. So I'm pretty damn impressed with Bridgestone for lasting 19 years. That is a long time for a tire. Uh, but anyway, as we were taking them off of the rims, they were literally falling apart. So, yeah, I, you know, I figured I'd keep the ones off of the XJ. Get some new ones for the XJ. But keep the old ones and put them on here. And uh, so I think it looks pretty decent, you know, aside from the gaping rust holes. As for the turn signals not working, this has been an intermittent problem I've had for a long time now. I've replaced the flasher relays down in the fuse box under there multiple times. It always fixes the problem, but it only lasts, they only last like three to four months and then they die again. Um, so it's, it does it to the flashers and the turn signals. They're different relays. Both of them seem to just die in, in three month intervals. So I don't know if it's the parts I'm ordering or if there's like a short somewhere that's causing them to die prematurely. But that's what's going on with the turn signals. And sometimes if you get lucky, after you flick the lever, you can like kick the fuse panel behind the clutch pedal and sometimes they'll start working again. So usually that's what I do. <laughs> What the hell? Bro. Bro, that's a whole ass box in my yard. Bro, what the... Hey, look at this. I can make them blink really fast. And they stop whenever I press the brakes. <laughs> I guess that narrows down where the problem is. Somewhere on that brake circuit, that's gonna blow a fuse. Okay, I took this out and it was hot. <laughs> but whenever I press the brake pedal, those lights come on. So there's definitely a short somewhere, somewhere in, I'd, I'd reckon on the back. <sighs> so here I was on my lunch break and uh, you know, I'm holding down the brake right now. The lights didn't come on. And look at this. Look at what? Bro, how do the how do the blinkers just suddenly work? I don't know, man. There's some some crazy shit going on with this thing. I just want to preface this by saying I don't want to sell it. I'm gonna miss this thing. But some guy told me that if I can fix the brake lights, that he will buy it. That is his only prerequisite. So, I'm going to try to fix the brake lights. Uh, 
this was not unplugged by the way I did that so um, because it's only a problem with the brake lights the turn signals um, I'm thinking to start back here because this is the only electrical problem that the truck is having everything else works and given its history with fuel pump problems I'm willing to bet that there has been some some electrical problems on the back half of the thing for quite some time so I fixed the fuel pump problem by relocating the ground this thing used to just eat fuel pumps it just went through them like once a week so obviously there's a problem with the truck if the fuel pumps you're putting in it keeps dying and uh, it turns out as per my neighbor who actually has like an old 60s truck he was telling me how since there's nothing electrical back here except for the tail lights and the gas tank like think about it there's nothing electrical in the back half of the truck except for those two things um so the fuel pump shares a ground with the tail lights meaning that the ground wire for the fuel pump goes all the way down this whole harness all the way to the back corner and grounds behind the driver's side taillight, which is where the ground is for the rest of the taillights. So that means electricity has to travel from the battery, which is, you know, all the way up there, goes to the fuel pump. In order to ground, that power has to go all the way to the back corner of the truck, which is the farthest point from the battery, and then follow the chassis ground all the way to the battery. So it's a, it's a very inefficient route for electricity to travel. And uh, what was going on was the ground wasn't exactly the greatest because it's just a sheet metal screw. So I cleaned up the screw and then I also relocated the ground as in I just spliced off of it. So it still has the original ground option. Um, but it also, if we follow this, can ground back here by the, uh, the fuel filter on top of it. So ever since I put this one wire in here for a new ground for it, it basically cut the electricity's travel path in half and I've never had another problem with the fuel pump. But anyway, uh, I'm just gonna kinda guess my way through this. I don't really know where to start with electrical problems. I'm just gonna start from the back and work my way forward until the problem fixes itself. And what I'm thinking is the first place to start is probably gonna be this useless thing here. Um, obviously, looking at the condition of this bumper, I'm never gonna tow anything with it. So I don't think I even need the trailer wires. So I'm just gonna take them out. I'm gonna, you know, just cut them out of the harness and forget about them because I have a feeling with just some basic old electric tape on that and uh, these weird snap-on connectors, I'm, I'm guessing they might be causing some sort of problems. Maybe we might have an open circuit and with an open circuit, you know, the, the tail lights obviously won't have a ground. They won't have a path to complete the circuit, so they're not gonna work. Now, I don't know if this is the problem, and I totally could use a multimeter to figure that out, but, I mean, I really, nobody's going to be towing anything with this thing anytime soon. So, I'm just going to cut this all out. Something else interesting I found is this. Um, I don't know what this does, or where it goes, but it was unplugged. So, I'll see what I can do about that, too. Another thing that's never worked <clears throat> are the reverse lights. And maybe that's what that is. I don't know. I'm going to worry about that later. I'm going to focus on my main goal first. Uh, so I just I cut this out. And uh, I was able to fish the wires over the frame rail back here. And I just broke that little holder thing. That one was already broken. From here it goes above the gas tank. So I'm not going to fish that out. But uh, I think I should be able to just cut this and splice this back on. They are color-coded, it's kind of hard to tell, because they're all dirty. There's a blue, a brown, white with black stripe, black with white stripe, and then black is ground. Upon closer inspection of the harness, look at this. That wire is almost cracked in half. I bet that's causing some problems, probably from rubbing on uh, all of these. So after the slightest bit of research, I did find a wiring diagram. Uh, I got all the colors and what they do and what pins they go to in the connector here. So pin 3 is the only one that doesn't have a wire in it. As I was screwing around with this stuff, the reverse wire just fell out of the connector. So now I'm going to take it apart and try to see what's going on 
inside of here with these pins. I might have to just get a new connector at this point. I'm not sure. But I'm thinking I'll at least, at the very least, be able to fix the reverse lights, which will be something. Here's your pin for the reverse lights. It's not looking so great, especially compared to the ground wire, which has no corrosion on it whatsoever. Now, this, I imagine, is going to be a pretty unique thing. So, and that, you know, that doesn't look too repairable. So, I don't think I need a new connector, which isn't really that big of a deal. I just got to go get any old connector and then just splice it onto the existing harness. All right, yeah, so nobody sells connectors that you can just pick up the day of. I guess AutoZone has a few, but they're all two or three pin connectors, which I could just buy a two and a three pin connector, but AutoZone's like 12 miles away. I don't want to spend that kind of money, I guess. So it might be a hack job, but here's what I'm thinking. I can just take this connector, for example, out of the out of the silver Jeep here, which this has four, and then also the uh, battery connector the, the temperature sensor so there's two good connectors right there just chilling and uh, I imagine they're the same yeah they look like the same gauge wire if slightly bigger if anything so I'm just gonna take this connector and that connector and put them on there so you know not not really a hack job but kind of a professional hack job if you will okay here's what I got this connector with the four pins on it is going to be like the main functionality connector. So we've got reverse, left turn, right turn, brakes, running lights. That's all going to be on here. And then this one, I've just spliced the two wires together. And this is just going to be the ground connector. Because I know the Comanches don't really have the greatest grounds. Alright, I've spliced on my connectors here. And the main harness over here. And I'm going to route these above the frame rail like they were. And then plug them in. All right, zip ties galore. Just the goal is to just not have the harness moving around. I got it pretty well secured in here. And that just occurred to me that I should probably have tested it before I put everything back together all nice and tidy. And uh, in other news, this thing, I'm pretty sure this is just uh, for the license plate light. Because this is blue, meaning it's part of the running light circuit. And uh, this doesn't look factory to me i feel like somebody's been in here and messed with these before so uh i think that's why that's like that uh, like maybe maybe each one of the two lights had its own connector to the harness and for whatever reason they decided to just go with one spot for the connector and run it i don't know what the thought process was there but they both work so i'm just not going to screw with that let's do a test i guess i can put my relay back in there okay nothing's freaking out let's try headlights okay my side marker things are still on though okay they're on the running lights kind of hard to tell because they're in direct sunlight but yeah both of the running lights work okay well since those blinker lights are on in there yeah the front ones so there's a problem with the front running lights just like there always has been as i mentioned earlier do the blinkers work though well i heard it click once nothing Okay, what about the flashers? Oh, it's spazzing out again. Damn. Let's see if the reverse lights work. Oh! Oh my god! Wow, okay. I've never seen those turned on, ever. They have never worked. Okay, well, there's one problem fixed. So the brake lights work. Yeah, it's so hard to see when it's so bright out. So the brake lights and the running lights and the reverse lights work, but not the turn signals. 
interesting. So what you saw in that clip there was me putting the right turn signal on. That's when the one brake light stayed on. And then I put the flashers on and they both flashed really rapidly. So this is pointing to a short somewhere. But I'm glad the reverse lights work now. I, I dug into this a long time ago, like when I first got it. Um, I replaced the bulbs first, obviously. You start with the simple stuff. And then I replaced the reverse switch on the transmission. And neither of those fixed the problem, so I just kind of gave up after that. But, you know, I'm glad to know it was that, that broken wire this whole time. So, yeah, the reverse lights work, and the brake lights work. There's a, there's a short somewhere with a blinker circuit, and because those front markers are out, too, I'm betting it's somewhere up front this time. So, I don't know, just bear with me while I'm trying to think about this. The MJ is a bit different than the XJ, because... Turn signals are shared with the brake lights. It's the same bulb. The same wire activates either function. So, if the brake lights work, then the turn signals should too. But they don't. All of this is completely unre unrelated to reverse. But come on, man. Doesn't that look cool? Look at it. It's pretty cool. What it has to be then, it has to be on the part of the circuit that is only responsible for the turn signal. So it's not part of the brake switch, it's not part of uh, any of the wire that connects any of this to the, to the lights. It has to be something close to or directly related to the relays. I don't think it's the relays themselves, because like I've said, I've replaced them a million times. It has to be either an open or a short. If it's an open circuit, there would be not enough resistance for the relay to flash in an acceptable uh, pattern. Uh, this is why when you put LEDs in cars like this, they flash really fast, you know, if they're in the turn signal slot, because there's not enough resistance. So if there's an open circuit, that means there's not enough resistance, but if it's open, then they wouldn't work. So that's this is why it's throwing me off here. I don't I don't know where to start. I'm gonna have to do some research on this. I think I may have been onto something. So I looked on the old forums for a little bit, and somebody mentioned that uh, corroded or bad sockets for the bulbs in these things can cause weird problems like this. I kind of follow that. I, I see what they're getting at with that. So I have, I've have i never taken these things out before, so I'm going to inspect those. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be real fun. Let's do it. Okay. The bulb looks relatively new, honestly. Somebody might have screwed with this before. Is this a connector? Or is that all one... Is there a separate connector back in there? Oh, it's one of those. Interesting. And it's all part of the harness, like there's no way to just get the socket off. Oh, wait, there's some... some rust on the side. I don't know how these things work. There's... Okay. So with neither one of these bulbs in here, everything's behaving the same way. Which tells me that because they don't light up anyway, it doesn't, it's, it's like they're not getting power. See, it should, it should light up because I've got the, I've got the running lights on now. This, you can see that one's on. Putting this in here does not turn it on. It should. And uh, if the flashers still go crazy and the turn signals still don't work without the bulbs in here, 
it may as well just not have bulbs in it, which, yeah, which means they're not getting power. So somewhere on this harness is not getting power to these sockets. It could be the sockets themselves. And something else I found was this is the bulb on the other side. It's not orange, it's clear. Come on, let's... Yeah, that doesn't work either. Okay, interesting. Another clue. I should have started with this. I don't know why I didn't. Let's check the fuses, huh? How about how about the fuses? That that's probably gonna point us in a certain direction. Um, so I pulled out the fuse for for the hazard stop. It's it, it's uh right there. I pulled that one out and it looks like this. Now we're getting somewhere. What happens if I put a new fuse in here? Will it burn up like this? What is this from? How long has this been burnt up? What cause is this? Is there still a short somewhere? Shit. I just happen to have a blue 15 amp. I'm gonna shove that in there and watch it explode. Okay, my arrows aren't on. Those still work. Those still work. What happens if I put a bulb in that slot? I feel like it's not going to turn on. No. Hey, wait, look, look, look at this, look at this. Look, it works. Look, that one works too. Oh, I took, I took this, uh, this fuse out and, and then that's all I did. That's all I did. Now they work. Look, look, it's blinking. Okay, we're on to something. I don't know what we're on to, but it's something. Do the flashers work? No. Now they just don't do anything. Wait a minute, what happens if I put that back in? Okay, now they're going crazy. That's, that's probably the fuse that blew up. Okay, so the hazards only work when that fuse is in its slot and when it is there, they go crazy. I think I may have inadvertently found the problem. So that one rust spot in there, that's the ground prong apparently. So I, you know, I just completely had a brain stroke about this for a second. One of those pins on the bottom is for the running lights, the other one is for the turn signal, and then the one on the side is the ground, and the ground is completely destroyed on both of them. So let's go to AutoZone. All right, so luckily they had the part. Only one, unfortunately. I am going to need to replace both of them, but uh, I'm just going to go back tomorrow and pick up the second one. They had to order it from their warehouse or whatever. Uh, here's your, I don't, yeah, here's your part number. And uh, it says it's for Fords, 74 to 89. Uh, but this is not a Ford. But it's, it's the, bro, look at this. It'll, it'll work. Come on, man. It's the same thing corporate wants you to find the differences between these pictures you can see this the ground tab in here is just gone it's rusted off this one has uh, very clearly a ground tab so I also picked up a new set of bulbs that are both orange because the one of them was white for some reason and uh, I'm gonna splice this new socket onto this side right here so the thing came with some basic crimp on connectors I cut them off and put on my heat shrink crimp connectors instead because I like these a lot better. Uh, the white wire is the running lights so that goes to blue. The black wire is ground so that goes to black and then the red wire is a turn signal which goes to in this case brown and then on the other side the red wire is going to go to the, um, the gray wire with a black stripe. This is the turn signal one on this side. So let's see if it works. Mm -hmm. Well, look at that. Okay. Seems to be functioning normally. I know this one is... I don't have a bulb in that one, but it still works. I don't know why. I feel like it shouldn't. But there's the running lights on. Okay, and it works. So I bet that's the problem right there is these damn sockets. I don't remember where I put it. Yeah, I'm willing to bet that busted ground tab was causing uh, not, not to have running lights. Because I can speak English. 
So I bet what might have been happening is uh, it was grounding on the other side of the bottom pin here. So like the, the hazard lights were grounding through the turn signal circuit, I bet is what was happening. Uh, because they didn't have their, their usual ground. Now I doubt the hazards are going to work without this one in here. But I'll see what they do. Yeah, they're still going ape shit. But, okay, it does flash though. So yeah, I'll have to just see if uh, if this one will work. Now that it's dark out, let's see how these reverse lights do their job. And reverse, and they're on. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, they, you know, they light up the ground, kind of, like they're supposed to. You know, sitting in the driver's seat, I, you know, they, they light up the ground, acceptably. I mean, stock reverse lights are never that great. Uh, well, let's turn on the... Oh, yeah, that doesn't really make a difference. But, uh, you know, at least now I have them, because before all you had was the, uh, the running lights. And they're not bright at all. And it's, it is hard to tell on the camera, but you can see they definitely light up the area. So tomorrow I'm going to go pick up the other socket, and then hopefully that'll fix the hazards, and that'll be all the exterior lights functioning. All right. Hell yeah. I got it working. And something else that it used to do back when the front blinkers did work is it would be opposite of the back one so when the back one was lit up the front one would be off and they would alternate but now they're in unison it's kind of hard to tell but they are i assure you now something that still isn't fixed is the damn flashers they still they still spaz out all right get this all i did was swap these so these are your flashers uh, the top one is for the hazards, and this one's for the blinkers. Uh, I just, I swapped them. In fact, I can just take that one out. But, uh, look, now they're not spazzing out. So, B, what's a recap? The original goal was to fix the taillights and the turn signals. And I accidentally fixed the reverse lights as well. So here's my, just the general synopsis of what I did. So I knew this whole connector area was going to be causing some problems with the trailer hitch wires and everything. And then upon taking the connector apart, it turned out it was internally disintegrated. So I put some connectors from the silver Jeep on here. This one's for the ground and this one's for the four functions. So that fixed the, the brake lights the turn signals and the reverse lights. Um, and then the hazards still weren't working. So after replacing the two sockets up here, that fixed those. So what I'm willing to bet happened to this thing is it just got fried from current probably flowing backwards through it as uh, I, I, you know, I theorized earlier that because those ground prongs were missing on the sockets, uh, the turn signal circuit was probably grounding backwards through the hazard circuit. And that would explain that melted fuse and it would explain why this thing doesn't work. So these things are pretty cheap, especially on Rock Auto. So I'm just gonna throw a new one of these in here and then everything should work. All right, it just came in the mail today. Let's throw it in there and see if it fixes the problem. All right, and hey. All right, finally. And that's all it is, that's all there was to it. Beautiful. Wow, imagine having a fully road legal truck. That's a new experience for me. Go on a test drive, shall we? Listen to that beast run. 
Just an old tired tractor engine. Yeah, it kind of does that sometimes. Towards the beginning of the video, I mentioned somebody was going to buy it if I fixed all the lights. So I told him I fixed all the lights and uh, he just left me on red. So you know what? You know what, guys? Fine. Fine. If, he, if he's going to be like that, I guess I'll just have to keep it. You know? Fine. I'll just take me and my functioning turn signals elsewhere where we're appreciated. Let's uh, simulate a Renix moment. Oh no, it would appear as if my Peugeot BA105 transmission has randomly and inexplicitly blown up. Whatever shall I do? Well, while I'm on the side of the road uh, unable to move, let me safely enable my flashers. Oh. I thought they weren't working for a second there. Shit, that was about to be the ultimate failure moment. They just take a while to get going. But look at this, now I'm safely stranded. Isn't this great? Uh, so a bit of a news flash update. I guess I'm moving to Florida. And since I can't sell this thing, that means I'm gonna have to get it down there somehow. Now with a clutch on its last limbs, a transmission that could explode at any given second, a bad pinion bearing on a Dana 35, and literally a broken leaf spring. Well, I'll get it down there somehow, and you know, that sounds like an adventure worth having. If I sounded a bit tired and annoyed in this video, well, I, I am tired, I'm exhausted. Uh, I don't know what video is going to be next. I'll just keep trying to surprise y'all. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to bed now.